So let's talk about value objects. Here I have a very simple controller called Steam Invitation Controller. And inside of here I have a store method. This store method simply delegates all of the logic to a resource and passes all of the data through Team Invite DTO. Now here we can see that we have a couple of values, one of them being name, email, and phone. You see, those are just strings, but uh, I think we could do something better because you know not every string would be an email and not every string would be a phone number. So maybe we can push our type safety a bit further and maybe you know get something there that we could get for free. So uh, one of the things that we could do there is introduce something called value objects. And uh, what we could do is we could simply create a new directory. Uh, now the place is kind of will depend on what kind of uh, value object are you creating. Uh, we could create a new module called shared. Uh, and inside of here, we could create value objects. So here, let's create something called, uh, you know, email. And this email would be like a plain or old PHP class that we could just uh, use here instead of our string. So we could have an email. And uh, maybe let's do the same thing for our phone. So this should be an email, this should be a phone. Uh, yeah, let's maybe keep it that way for now. And, you know, now we just need to instantiate it somehow. So we could simply do, you know, new uh, email and then wrap this whole thing here. And then add a constructor. Uh, which would obviously work. Uh, but I don't know, maybe you could do something like, you know, email from and phone from. So maybe you can add something like that. Um, here we could also add a constructor. So both of these ways would be acceptable. And now we know that what has to be provided here is either a string or a null. And let's just call it email and let's instantiate it at null. So what this from will do, it will simply return, uh, you know, new static, uh, email. So we'll have a fresh instance of this class and we can obviously type in that or just do static. Okay. Um, now we obviously need to accept this value here. So let's make it protected. So we know that will be a string or a null and it should be called email. Uh, so let's just wrap it because we don't need it like that. And what does it give us? Well, now not a lot. And honestly, we can just copy all of that and make it a phone number as well. Uh, just change the variable name. And yeah, now we have like two very simple value objects. Um, and this gives us a better type safety. So now like if we go to uh, our service, we can see that we are calling for the phone and email here. Now these two obviously like don't implement any two string or, or anything like that. So it won't really work. So maybe we could also add a function called... Uh, to native, uh, which would simply, you know, return this phone. Now I know, for now, it doesn't really seem like it's adding any value, but uh, we'll get there. Don't worry. Let's do the same for our phone. Uh, sorry, for our email. And uh, let's go back to the service. Now we can simply do to native on all of those. Okay. So why did we do all of this? That's a great question. Well, first of all, maybe, uh, you know, your email that you're getting here, this should be email, obviously. Uh, you know, maybe it, it doesn't really, maybe it's not really an email. Maybe, you know, we got this data from an unknown source and we need to run some validation. And maybe if it's not valid, we should just make it null. Okay. Um, so maybe instead of doing it like that, we can just do, you know, protected uh, string or null email. And here we could do if filter var email filter validate email. It's not valid. We can simply do, you know, email equals null. 
and we can simply do this email equals email. So maybe, you know, if we want to, to have this validation here, we could add something like this. Maybe it makes sense in your application. Um, but, you know, this is nice, but normally we have, like, you know, in our controller, we, we have validation done through by Laravel for free. So why would we do something like that? Well, besides of the, the better type safety and actually knowing what an email is, uh, what we can do is we can add some additional logic. So for example, we could do something like a domain. And this would return a string or maybe a string or a null. So, you know, we could do something like string from this email uh, after last at to string. So this seems pretty good. We have the validation for free and we can add some, some additional information about our data. Uh, so maybe, you know, when it comes to the phone number, what we could do uh, is we could do like, you know, is us number. And we could do something like string of this phone, you know, starts with plus one. And this would return a Boolean. And, um, you know, when it comes to phone numbers, maybe we want to force that there has to be a plus in front of the number. And maybe default to, um, to plus one if it's not there. So, you know, if... If string of a phone uh, doesn't start with plus, then we can simply do uh, phone equals, you know, plus phone. And then just do this phone equals phone and change it so it's not like this, but I mean, this would still work, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, we have some additional information that we can add there. Uh, we have some pieces of logic that we can we can add. Uh, maybe we need to get uh, the type of the phone number, or we need to you know check if the phone number is valid because for some reason um, maybe like we didn't have validation in place, but now we added it, and now we have to run it through. Now we have to run the validation for every record in our database, so we can utilize this this value object or something like that. Now, some people will hate that there is some additional logic inside the value objects. I find that pretty great. Um, but what's important here is to add a couple of things, because now comparing, you know, two phone numbers will be hard because we, we wouldn't be able to do something like, um, you know, new phone of one to three equals new phone of one to three, that would be false. So maybe we can, you know, add even like an interface or a contract, uh, you know, that would add like a public function, you know, is uh, is same or is equals to another phone. And we could simply do, you know, return this to native equals phone to native. And maybe we can also add something like is empty. So this would return, you know, this to native equals null. So I think these two would for sure be a, a nice part of the interface that we could enforce. Uh, same with to native, which always like could throw an, ex an exception if it cannot be used for one specific value type. So uh, let's just create like a value object interface. And inside of here, let's add these methods that we wanted to add. So um, is empty and we'd get another value object. Oh, sorry. This is supposed to be is equals. And is empty. This would return a bool. This would return a bool as well. Um, the only problem 
in here is that if we do you know implement value object interface uh we can merge this again together yeah this wouldn't pass and here this should be email and not a phone so yeah i'm actually not sure how to do it the proper way um they what we can do for now, I, I'm sure there is a better way. Uh, maybe not like through PHP, but for sure through PHP doc. Uh, but I will just do, you know, that any value object interface has to be defined here. And um, we should implement, uh, we should add to native here. That will return mixed. This should implement value object interface. Uh, this should be value object interface. So yeah, here we could do something like phone instance of this and uh, this is not ideal, but that should do the trick and this should be email. So now we can simply do something like, you know, phone equals uh, phone from, and we can do one, two, three. Okay, let's do the full path modules, third value objects. And we can do, you know, phone two equals plus one, two, three. And we can do, you know, phone is equal phone two is equals Oh, and here we should have uh, an exclamation. Let's do it all over again. Phone, phone two. And now we can see that they are true. Uh, it should be is equal, shouldn't it? Is equal. Let's just change that. So yeah, now, you know, we can also do ECUS phone, uh, ECUS number, I guess, ECUS number should be ECUS phone, or, uh, you know, we can do like email equals email from, and we can do just gibberish. So yeah, let's do this and, you know, we can do something like email to native would be null. And we can do at gmail.com, which to native would work. And we can even do, you know, email domain, which would return gmail.com. So here you go. Uh, this is questionable. Some people will like it, some people will hate it. Uh, but generally speaking, it's pretty nice. I think, uh, you know, it can push your, your type safety a bit further. And uh, you can definitely do a lot of cool stuff with it, especially, you know, if you are dealing with those complex, you know, seemingly primitive values like phones or emails or, you know, locations, vectors and, and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, classes are just great to do stuff like that. And I highly recommend it. So thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.